Before I get to the content of this video, I would first like to thank Dave Jones over at EEV Blog for featuring one of my teardown videos in his latest guest video program. For educational channels like mine, his generosity would certainly help attracting more viewers like you and help the channel grow. And in that video, I did a teardown of a traveling wave tube from an HP 493A microwave amplifier. I would strongly recommend you checking out that video first. And what you are looking at here is actually the cathode I accidentally broke up while doing the teardown. And why am I showing you the cathode? Well, actually, I accidentally found out that uh, this cathode is uh, radioactive. So for that, I'm going to show you on this uh, Geiger counter. So let me turn on the Geiger counter. And by the way, so let me put this down so that you can see what is the radiation level uh, of the environment. And for a typical environment, the background radiation should be less or at around uh, 0.1 microsieverts per hour. And that's just a rough count. Some areas, depends on the location you are at, some probably are higher, some are lower. And uh, so the background radiation is uh, very low. And uh, I'll, I will let this uh, Geiger counter run for a few minutes so that uh, the ratings uh, stabilize. But in my lab, it is somewhere around uh, you know, 0.1 microsievert per hour. Nine, zero 09 so that's the uh, about the uh, background radiation level and it's not gonna go much higher than that anyway so I thought I would show you what uh, uh, I found about this uh, cathode material here and uh, this tube when I place it carefully under the uh, Geiger counter let me prop this up so you can read you can get to the uh, so the Geiger tube is actually at the bottom of this uh, counter. So let me let it run for a while and you will see that uh, the reading will gradually increase. So let, uh, let me turn on the background light. And uh, it is not that radioactive. It's just uh, ever so slightly more radioactive than the uh, background radiation here in the lab. So, but nevertheless, you can tell that uh, this definitely is a little bit elevated compared to what I had before. Uh, before, if you recall, the reading was around uh, 0.1 microsieverts. And right now, the reading started to climb. But uh, it depends on how I place that uh, uh, cathode, this cathode, the, the tube. It may or may not hit uh, 0.2. But... Uh, it should be reading, but it should be reaching its peak uh, somewhere around 0 0.2 or 0 0.25, depends on how close the uh, the cathode is to the the tube. So as you can see, that you definitely can detect some radioactivity here. And again, let me uh, turn on the backlight. You will see right now we're reading somewhere around 0.19 microsieverts per hour. So clearly this uh, cathode material here, uh, whatever it is, it is radioactive. So now if I remove that, uh, the Geiger counter would gradually go down, back down to uh, the environment background radiation level. So while it's uh, going down, uh, let's uh, take a look at what this material might be that to make this uh, radioactive. And uh, so just by the look of this glass, it appears to me that uh, the top of this glass, if you look at this, uh, it's somewhat different than the bottom because it has this little bit of a yellow tint to it. So that could be uh, something like a a uranium glass and actually so right now let me turn turn it off because this is kind of annoying and you get a point right now it's going back to uh, the background radiation level now so let me turn this off anyway so 
This material could be uh, uranium glass. Now, how do we know if it is uranium glass? Well, I we, of course we could use a uh, gamma spectrometer to measure the energy level, but I don't have one. So another way to look at it is to use a UV to shine on the uh, on this cathode material and to so, to see if it fluoresces. If uh, it does fluoresce, means that uh, this is very likely to be uranium oxide uh, coating inside. So let's take a look here. So for that, I have this uh, uh, well, this uh, laser, which uh, happens to be on the. Uh, it's not really ultraviolet, but nevertheless, they call it a purple laser. So it's at a shorter wavelength. So it's sufficient to uh, cause the material to fluoresce. So, so let's take a look at that. So right now, by the way, if I shine it on the surface, it looks like that. Shine on my skin, you will see a very faint blue dot. So let's shine on the tube here. And uh, if I move it, ah, you will see that. Did you see that? OK, so if I move it up here, you will see the green hint, the green hill on top of the tube. So let me uh, try this angle. Uh, probably will see better. So, and you will see that uh, it starts right at around here, and uh, so it covers about uh, the upper quarter of the tube. So that's what makes it slightly radioactive. Now, at this uh, radioactivity level, it's very, very safe, so it doesn't really cause any harm. And the reason some of the older tubes use uh, uh, uranium oxide in the glass is to make it a very good seal uh, between the metal and uh, the glass because otherwise when the glass expands and uh, shrinks due to the thermal cycle it will cause the vacuum tube to leak uh, to crack so that's the majority of the use and uh, in some of the older vacuum tubes you can also find this type of uh, uh, uranium glass uh, used in the uh, the tube. So I thought that was something uh, interesting and thought I would like to just share it with you. So this uh, vacuum tube, at least uh, this section of the uh, traveling wave tube, is indeed radioactive. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, hope you learned something new. If you liked the video, please give it a big thumbs up and remember to subscribe and share. I will catch up with you next time.